The Andaman shrew is a critically endangered species of mammal in the family Sericidae. It is endemic to the South Andaman island of India. They are usually active by twilight or in the night and have specialized habitat requirements. Habitat loss due to selective logging, natural disasters such as tsunami and drastic weather change are thought to contribute to current population declines. The emerald Sri Lanka spreadwing, is a monotypic species of damselfly in the family Lestidae. The species was thought to be extinct since none have been found since it was first scientifically described in 1862. However, in 2012 this species was rediscovered by a young odontologist Amila Sumanapala from the Peak Wilderness Sanctuary. It is endemic to Sri Lanka and so far it has only been recorded from Peak Wilderness Sanctuary. The Knuckles pygmy lizard is an agamid species endemic to Sri Lanka. Known only from Knuckles mountain range, it is classified as a critically endangered species due to habitat loss and logging. Male has a pale greenish yellow on upper lip, lower lip dark greenish black. A light greenish yellow band extends from snout tip to axilla. Female has a buff colored throat, throat with longitudinal brown streaks, upper and lower lips light brown with black patches. Tail consists with seven greenish buff and eight brown crossbands. Reasons for the western purple-faced langur critical endangerment are largely due to deforestation. Studies have estimated that 81% to over 90% of the subspecies' former range has been deforested. Deforestation harms the monkey in several ways. The western purple-faced langur is naturally folivorous, and its biology is specialized for a diet that consists primarily of leaves. With leaves less available, the monkey's diet consists largely of cultivated fruit taken from people's gardens. This has several detrimental impacts on the monkey, it may not be able to extract adequate nutrition from fruit which it is not biologically adapted to use as a primary food source and the food is only available seasonally, leaving inadequate nutrition outside of fruiting season. Since the western purple-faced langur is naturally arboreal, deforestation also impacts its activities besides eating. With less forest available, monkeys spend more time than is natural on the ground, exposing them to danger from domestic dogs and cars, and they also climb power lines, exposing them to danger of electrocution. Also, when the monkeys are on the ground, they are easier to capture for the pet trade. Hunting is also a concern. The Burmese star tortoise is a critically endangered tortoise species, native to the dry, deciduous forests of Myanmar. It is close to extinction in Myanmar, as it is eaten by the native Burmese. It has radiating star-shaped patterns on its strongly domed carapace. It has bumps on its shell that look like stars. The Burmese star tortoise is considered critically endangered. However it is still commonly eaten and is exported to food markets in neighboring China. One recent expedition in Burma searched for the species in its habitat for 400 hours with specially trained dogs and five volunteers, and only found five tortoises. White-rumped vultures usually become active when the morning sun is warming up the air so that thermals are sufficient to support their soaring. They were once visible above Calcutta in large numbers. When they find a carcass, they quickly descend and feed voraciously. They perch on trees nearby and are known to sometimes descend also after dark to feed. They sometimes feed on dead vultures. One white-rumped vulture was observed when getting caught in the mouth of a dying calf. In Southeast Asia, the near-total disappearance of white-rumped vultures predated the present diclofenac crisis, and probably resulted from the collapse of large wild ungulate populations and improved management of dead livestock, resulting in a lack of available carcasses for vultures. The Myanmar snub-nosed monkey is a critically threatened species of colubine monkey discovered in 2010 in northern Myanmar. The lips are prominent, and the nose upturned, allegedly causing the animal to sneeze in rainy weather. 
deforestation due to logging operations, isolation and hunting by local humans for food are considered dangers to the small extant population. The known Burmese population size is 260 individuals, and it is believed less than 200 remain in China. It is recognized as critically endangered. Despite conservation concerns, many aspects of the Siamese crocodile life history in the wild remain unknown, particularly regarding its reproductive biology. Adults feed mainly on fish and snakes, but also eat amphibians and small mammals. Very little is known about the natural history of this species in the wild, but females build mound nests constructed from scraped up plant debris mixed with mud. Siamese crocodiles are under threat from human disturbance and habitat occupation, which is forcing remaining populations to the edges of their former range. Extinct from 99% of its original range, the Siamese crocodile is considered one of the least studied and most critically endangered crocodilians in the world. Illegal capture of wild crocodiles for supply to farms is an ongoing threat, as well as incidental capture, drowning in fishing nets and traps. It currently has extremely low and fragmented remaining populations with little proven reproduction in the wild. Factors causing loss of habitat include conversion of wetlands for agriculture, chemical fertilizers use, use of pesticides in rice production, and an increase in the population of cattle. The skin of the Sunda pangolin's feet is granular, although pads are found on its front feet. It has thick and powerful claws to dig into the soils in search of ant nests or to tear into termite mounds. The Sunda pangolin has poor eyesight, but a highly developed sense of smell. Lacking teeth, its long, sticky tongue serves to collect ants and termites. They protect their soft underparts by rolling into balls when they feel threatened. They are strong diggers and make burrows lined with vegetation for insulation near termite mounds and ant nests. Sunda pangolins have low immunity, making them sensitive to fluctuations in temperature. Pangolins as a genus are among the most heavily poached and exploited protected animals. Like other pangolin species, the Sunda pangolin is hunted for its skin, scales, and meat, used in clothing manufacture and traditional medicine. Scales are made into rings as charms against rheumatic fever, and meat is eaten by indigenous peoples. Despite enjoying protected status almost everywhere in its range, illegal international trade, largely driven by Chinese buyers, has led to rapidly decreasing population numbers. The Sunda pangolin is currently considered to be critically endangered. Bengal floricans live in open tall grassland habitats with scattered bushes. The birds are usually encountered in the early mornings and evenings and are most easily spotted in the breeding season from March to August, which is when most censuses of the population are conducted. Restricted to tiny fragments of grassland scattered across South and Southeast Asia, the Bengal florican is the world's rarest bustard. It is known to have become increasingly threatened by land conversion for intensive agriculture, particularly for dry season rice production. Poaching continues to be a problem in Southeast Asia, while the South Asian population is down to less than 350 adult birds, about 85% of which are found in India. Though more threatened, birds in Southeast Asia may number as many as in South Asia but more probably closer to or even less than 1,000 adults. The Mekong giant catfish is a threatened species in the Mekong, and conservationists have focused on it as a flagship species to promote conservation on the river. Although research projects are currently ongoing, relatively little is known about this species. 
As fry, this species feeds on zooplankton in the river and is known to be cannibalistic. After approximately one year, the fish becomes herbivorous, feeding on filamentous algae, probably ingesting larvae and paraphyton accidentally. Endemic to the lower half of the Mekong River, this catfish is in danger of extinction due to overfishing, as well as the decrease in water quality due to development and upstream damming. A 2018 study suggests that the Mekong stocks could fall up to 40% as the result of dam projects. The species is classified as critically endangered, the number living in the wild is unknown, but catch data indicate the population has fallen by 80% in the last 14 years. A substantial population of 455 critically endangered northern white-cheeked crested gibbons has been recently found living in Laos. Conservation International report they are living at high altitudes, and far from human settlements. This population, representing two-thirds of the total known are, apparently, the only confirmed viable population of this variety in the world. The northern white-cheeked gibbon is arboreal in habits, and primarily herbivorous, feeding mainly on fruits, with some leaves, buds, and flowers. However, up to 10% of their diet may be composed of insects and other small animals. The calls of northern white-cheeked gibbons are among the most complex of those produced by gibbons, and are significantly different between males and females. Local people reported that the sayola is active in the day as well as at night, but prefers resting during the hot midday hours. The sayola is currently considered to be critically endangered. Its restrictive habitat requirements and aversion to human proximity are likely to endanger it through habitat loss and habitat fragmentation. Sayola suffer losses through local hunting and the illegal trade in furs, traditional medicines, and for use of the meat in restaurants and food markets. They also sometimes get caught in snares that have been set to catch animals raiding crops, such as wild boar and muntjac. The key feature of the area occupied by the sayola is its remoteness from human disturbance. Sayola are shot for their meat, but hunters also gain high esteem in the village for the production of a carcass. Due to the scarcity, the locals place much more value on the sayola than more common species. Because the people in this area are traditional hunters, their attitude about killing the sayola is hard to change, this makes conservation difficult. Endemic to a small area in central Vietnam, the Vietnamese pond turtle was reportedly abundant in the 1930s, but all field surveys after 1941 had failed to locate any individuals in the wild. As it was occasionally seen traded as food, it was not yet extinct in the wild however. The species is nonetheless close to extinction in the wild, as illegal hunting seems to continue. Reintroduction programs of captive bred specimens are currently in progress. Hybridization in the wild would not seem to constitute a major threat. Delacour's langurs are diurnal, often spending the day sleeping in limestone caves, although they sleep on bare rocky surfaces if no caves are available. They are folivorous, with about 78% of the diet reportedly consisting of foliage. Despite living in forested habitats, Delacour's langurs are primarily terrestrial, only occasionally venturing into the trees. They swing by their hands when traveling through trees, and use their tails for balance when scrambling over steep rocky The eastern black-crested gibbon is a species of gibbon from northern Vietnam. From the 1960s until the 2000s there had been no confirmed sightings of the eastern black-crested gibbon and it was thought to be possibly extinct. In 2002 a small population was rediscovered. In 2005 it was estimated that this population included about 37 individuals. It is one of the rarest and most critically endangered primates in the world. This status has resulted from deforestation of its habitat, encroachment, and poaching. It is considered to be one of the world's 25 most endangered primates. The eastern black-crested gibbon is a species of gibbon from northern Vietnam. From the 1960s until the 2000s there had been no confirmed sightings of the eastern black-crested gibbon and it was thought to be possibly extinct. In 2002 a small population was rediscovered. In 2005 it was estimated that this population included about 37 individuals. It is one of the rarest and most critically endangered primates in the world. 
This status has resulted from deforestation of its habitat, encroachment, and poaching. It is considered to be one of the world's 25 most endangered primates. The Tonkin snub-nosed monkey has a flattened face with a pink upturned nose, thickened pink lips and areas of blue skin around its eyes. It is diurnal and its diet consists of a range of leaves, fruits, flowers and seeds. It moves about the canopy in small groups. Habitat loss and hunting are some of the major causes for declines of naturally occurring populations of non-human primates, including the Tonkin snub-nosed monkey. Decades of expanding human population and increasing demands for scarce agriculturally viable lands have led to the loss and fragmentation of the monkey's habitats. Many people around the world thought the bones of the Tonkin snub-nosed monkey had some medicinal benefits that help improve the conditions of the body. Their habitats are suffering there are growing numbers of illegal logging in the forests which restricted the Tonkin snub-nosed monkeys' actions as they live on the trees and the occasional mining causing populated air and change in the environment for them. By 2008, when a small population with three infants was discovered in a remote forest, fewer than 250 of the primates were thought to exist, in 2017 they were 110 individuals. Gray-shanked ducks are diurnal and primarily arboreal. They move about through trees by jumping and brachiating. In the past they have been found in groups as large as 50 individuals but those numbers have been greatly reduced to 4 to 15 individuals. Males are the dominant gender and dominance hierarchies have been observed while in captivity. They also engage in grooming to remove parasites and to establish and strengthen bonds between group members. Hunting has been a major problem for gray shanked ducks. They are hunted for bush meat and for traditional medicine purposes. Their bones are used to make a substance called, monkey bone bomb, which is thought to improve hemoglobin regeneration and renal function. Monkey bone bomb is also believed to treat lack of appetite, insomnia, and anemia. Gray shanked ducks are also used in the exotic wildlife trade. The adults are killed and the infants are taken and sold as pets. The Vietnam War also played a big part in reducing the population. Soldiers would use the monkeys for target practice. Deforestation and habitat fragmentation are also major threats. The giant muntjac the largest muntjac species and was discovered in 1994 in Vietnam. During an inundation, 38 giant muntjac were captured, studied, and released into the adjacent Nakai Nam Thun National Protected. Subsequent radio tracking of a sample of these animals showed the relocation was successful. The giant muntjac is commonly found in evergreen forests and weighs about 50 kg. It has a red-brown coat and is an even-toed ungulate. Due to slash and burn agriculture, combined with hunting, the giant muntjac is considered critically endangered. It is preyed upon by animals such as the tiger and leopard. Gongyalosoma mucatense is a species of snake of the family Colubridae. It is endemic to a small island in Malaysia. The Asian narrow-headed softshell turtle is a large species of softshell turtle in the family Trionychidae. It inhabits freshwater rivers and their tributaries, and a large female laid over 100 eggs. Malayan tigers prey on many mammals, whether their principal prey includes adult gaur and tapir is unknown. Occasionally, livestock is also taken. However, tiger predation reduces the numbers of wild boar which can become a serious pest in plantations and other croplands. Studies indicate that in areas where large predators are extinct, wild pigs are over 10 times more numerous than in areas where tigers and leopards are still present. Habitat fragmentation because of development projects and agriculture is a serious threat. Between 1988 and 2012, an area of about 13,500 square kilometers natural forest was lost in peninsular Malaysia. Nearly 64,800 square kilometers was converted to large-scale industrial plantations, primarily for palm oil production. Commercial poaching occurs at varying levels in all tiger range states. 
In Malaysia there is a substantial domestic market in recent years for tiger meat and manufactured tiger bone medicines. 